Are you a dedicated Micro Terrors listener? Then become one of the terrified by joining the Micro Terrors fan club. All members receive a welcome pack in the mail that includes a collectible Micro Terrors trading card, a Micro Terrors bookmark, printable games, coloring pages, and a personalized Micro Terror story with you as the main character. With two different membership levels to choose from, you can also enjoy commercial free episodes, read stories a week early, participate in polls, receive complimentary paperback copies of all Micro Terror books in the mail when they release, as well as enjoy discounted pricing on previously released books, and communicate directly with Micro Terror's writer and creator, Scott Donnelly. Become one of the terrified today at microterrors.com. Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night. And some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. The Grove City Werewolf, Part 3, written by Scott Donnelly. There was no hiding it now. Neither Uncle Curtis nor Aunt Jade could ignore the questions and quote-unquote elephant in the room. There was a werewolf in Grove City, and it had attacked another person, Teresa Breckenridge, the sweet woman who worked at the Grove City Visitor Center. Sean and Curtis had just seen her the previous day, so when Sean woke up again to a deja vu image of a reporter on TV, talking about a vicious attack the night before, he was naturally unnerved, scared, and worried. You're not leaving the house again, Jade insisted when she noticed Sean creep into the living room. Not until your parents get back tomorrow morning. Even though Jade acknowledged Sean's presence, Curtis hadn't. His attention was glued to the TV, never wavering. They couldn't even try to hide it now if they wanted to. The madness was too public. Over an easy breakfast of brown sugar oatmeal and milk, Curtis and Jade finally filled Sean in on everything they knew. There had always been rumors and sightings, just as Teresa had indicated. There were reports of eerie howls in the night, some of which were even caught on security footage and ring cameras around town. They'd become more frequent lately, though. People were scared. Parents were afraid to let their kids outside, especially at night. That's why the curfew had been put in place. Now the sightings and scary sounds had escalated into brutal attacks. The humble comic store owner and the friendly face at the visitor center had fallen victim to the werewolf. The big question now was, why? Why had the werewolf become so violent and enraged? Something must have happened to trigger it. The legends always describe werewolves as men or women who have been cursed, Jade said. They transform into the beast. Otherwise, they look like normal, average people. So the werewolf could be anyone, Sean concluded. Curtis nodded. Yeah, absolutely anyone. What could have stirred the creature into a rage, though, Jane wondered. Up until now, it's always just been rumored to be around. Nothing aggressive just alleged sightings. Why the sudden change to violence? It must feel threatened, Curtis said. Something in town must have changed. Curtis couldn't help but look up at Sean. The attacks didn't happen until... Sean went cold. There was no way his uncle was about to blame him for the attacks. He was innocent. Whatever was happening was a Grove City thing. It had nothing to do with his arrival. It couldn't. 
There was a knock on the front door, startling all three of them at the breakfast table. Curtis caught his breath and stood up, crossing through the house and opening the front door. From where Sean and Jade still sat, they couldn't see who Curtis was talking to. Then Curtis and the man at the door both appeared in the kitchen. Sean stood up. "'Hey, Sean!' the man said. It was Reese, the next-door neighbor. Sean hesitantly waved. His uncle stepped in and said, "'Since the police are urging people to stay inside today, Reese was wondering if you'd like to help him clean out his attic. It'll give you something to do.' "'It'll also give you fifty bucks,' Reese added with a generous smile. Fifty bucks!' Sean mumbled. He thought about it for a moment, and then the fifty bucks that bounced around inside his head won him over. Sure, Sean agreed. A little while later, Curtis walked Sean next door, saw he'd made it inside safely, and then returned home to do whatever it was that Uncle Curtis was going to do. Reese stood in his living room with his hands in his pockets. Bongo sat next to him, panting. Is it okay if I pay you when we're all wrapped up? Reese asked. Sean nodded. Great! Follow me! Reese led Sean down the hall and then directed his attention to an attic hatch on the ceiling. Reese pulled the cord and a wooden ladder unfolded, lowering to the floor. After you, Reese said. Sean never realized attics made him nervous until this very moment. He swallowed and took a deep breath before he ascended the wooden steps. The attic was messy. It didn't take Sean long to realize why Reese was so needy for his uncle's help. There were boxes, bags, piles of clothing, a tall antique mirror, and a mannequin in the corner covered in a pretty extensive collection of dust and spiderwebs. Man, there's stuff everywhere, Sean said, secretly disgusted by the mess. It was in complete contrast to the neat and presentable way in which Reese was dressed and acted. Reese laughed. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to get your uncle to help me for a little while, but between you and I, I feel like he's blowing me off. Sean didn't respond. He knew the truth, and obviously Reese did too. How long have you lived here? Sean asked. In Grove City? Reese pondered with a sigh. A long time. Sean laughed. You don't look old enough to have been anywhere for a long time. Reese didn't respond to Sean's speculation. He just stuffed his hands in his pockets and looked around the attic, finally landing his gaze on the far corner. There, Reese said. We'll start by cleaning out over there. That's where I'm going to put it. Put what? Reese smiled again. I have an important delivery coming this afternoon. The mailman should be delivering it fairly soon, actually. Jeff! Sean remembered the mailman's name. Reese seemed surprised. Yeah, that's right, Jeff. You have a good memory. Isn't today Sunday? Sean asked. There's no mail delivery on Sunday. A good memory and a keen sense, Reese smirked. Actually, the mail does deliver some priority packages on Sundays. He patted Sean on the back. Start moving some of those boxes and I'll grab a broom and dustpan from downstairs. We can try to tag team this thing and get you out of here a little quicker. Reese descended the wooden steps, leaving Sean alone in the attic. He shuffled through the hot mess, first moving the tall antique mirror out of the way. Once that was settled along the wall, he started moving boxes out of the corner. He lined them up around the mirror first, and then just started putting them wherever he felt like it. In the kitchen, Reese opened the closet door and pulled out a wooden broomstick. He reached in further to find the dustpan. Once he found it, he closed the closet door and turned around. Bongo stood in his way. Reese could tell something was wrong. What is it, boy? Reese said, kneeling down and petting his nervous dog on the head. Bongo was shaking. Something had him rattled. Reese stood up and froze. He felt it now, too. Something was wrong. A cool breeze blew through the house, letting him know that a window or door was open. There was someone in the house. Reese looked to his left, where his knife block sat on a counter. If there was an intruder, he could reach the knives. Their steel blades would certainly help fight off an attack. They just wouldn't… Suddenly the werewolf jumped up from behind Reese, raging and gnashing its teeth. Reese dropped to the ground. Bongo skittered backwards, his nails frantically clicking against the tile floor. 
Reese struggled to stand up, using the wooden broomstick as leverage, but the werewolf yanked the broomstick out of his hands and ferociously snapped it over his hairy knee. Reese's eyes widened as they focused solely on the broken, splintered ends of the broomstick. The werewolf lunged forward with the broken ends of the broomstick, stabbing downward, but Reese was quick, too quick for the werewolf. He rolled wildly until he was in the clear. He stood up and faced the hulking, hairy beast. The monster, now angered, tossed the broomsticks away and charged Reese. Reese backed up, but the wall stopped him. The werewolf opened its mouth, its teeth glistening with thick saliva. Reese had nowhere to go. He had no time to scream. Tune in next week for the finale of the Micro Terror's four week Halloween event, The Grove City Werewolf. Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com, where you can get the latest Micro Terrors news, read fun facts about each story, sign up for our monthly newsletter and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you can become one of the terrified by joining the fan club at microterrors.com to enjoy exclusive perks like reading stories a week early, receiving complimentary books, and communicating directly with Micro Terrors writer and creator Scott Donnelly. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram using the handle at microterrors. I hope you'll join us again soon for Micro Terrors, scary stories for kids. Attention, young mystery seekers. Are you ready to dive deeper into the world of the unknown? If you love the spooky tales from Micro Terrors, you're going to die for Creepy Clubhouse. Creepy Clubhouse is a monthly book subscription box that brings the most thrilling, spine-tingling stories right to your doorstep. Each box is packed with books and gifts that feature a new theme every month, from aliens to Bigfoot to the Bermuda Triangle. Perfect for brave listeners like you who can't get enough of the chills and thrills. And because you're a part of the Micro Terrors family, we've got a special treat just for you. Use the promo code TERROR10 to get 10% off your first Creepy Clubhouse subscription box order. Don't miss out on this eerie adventure where every box is a doorway into the unknown. Visit CreepyClubhouse.com and remember to use your exclusive code TERROR10. Join the club. Embrace the creepy.